Hi, and welcome. I'm Steve Martorano, and this is The Behavioral Corner. You're invited to hang with us as we discuss the ways we live today, the choices we make, the things we do, and how they affect our health and well-being. So you're on the corner, The Behavioral Corner. Please hang around a while. Hi, everybody. Welcome to The Behavioral Corner. Brand new year. Unbelievable how old I am, Uh, but welcome. What we do here on the Behavioral Corner is uh, we talk about everything because everything is what affects our behavioral health. We are uh, partnered with our great uh, underwriting partner, Retreat Behavioral Health. Uh, they not only provide the, uh, the uh, underwriting for this program, but they also are a great source of information. Their people are expert in the field of substance abuse and mental health treatment. And very often we call upon their folks to come in. And again, we, we say this, we've saying it for years, we're not here to do a commercial. We, we know retreat's very good. Their reputation is well known, but it's not an infomercial, it's informational. So I want to remind you that you'll know, you'll hear more about retreats uh, services a little later in the program. So that's what we do. If, you, if you're just finding the behavioral corner, we have a library of terrific guests we've done over the year, a, a broad range of topics, they exist now on our website, behavioralcorner.com. I would urge you, if you have the time to go check it out, you'll probably find an interview there that you might find interesting. If you do, uh, we'd really appreciate you hitting that subscription button. That would be very, very helpful for us. Anyway, let me tell you what we're doing today. We've got a little, uh, a, a kind of a nuanced program for you today, a little off our beaten path. Uh, when talking about substance abuse uh, treatment or uh, mental health services. And that is, um, we're going to take a look at the marketing of these services. Uh, Substance abuse treatment and and mental health treatment is a complicated, complex, and sensitive area um, in general. Uh, uh, There's still stigma attached to both those conditions. Um, So people are, are often reluctant and and confused and, and, and maybe aren't in the best position to make decisions about what they need and how they should get it. So we're going to take a look at the marketing of it, not so much to get a tutorial in marketing, um, but to become better informed so that we make better choices if and when we need these services. So to that end, uh, I'd like to welcome Matt O'Reilly, Matt's first time on the program. Uh, we welcome him to the Behavioral Corner. Um, hi, Matt. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, and Matt is with Retreat Behavioral Health uh, Marketing Department. Um, I'm sort of springing this on you. I should have I should have given you a little bit of heads up. I mean, in my view, and I've been in, I've been in broadcasting and communication for you know 200 years, um, and a lot of people are confused. We I believe we are in now the golden age of marketing across the board. I think advertising is obviously still the engine that drives a lot of this stuff, but marketing is really. Um, the powerful tool businesses and services and all kinds of people use to get their message across. And it is different than advertising. Uh, Matt, can you, can you simply describe the difference in your mind anyway, between advertising and marketing? Well, marketing is typically attached to an actual service that's con- consistently happening. Um, whether it's you know forward-facing marketing, where you have an individual that's out, whether it's in the community on a trade show floor, uh, really talking about the services or whatever it is that you're providing. Where advertising is, it's really simply almost like a uh, like a pay-to-play. Like I'm going to pay to have my advertisement on a billboard. I'm going to pay to have, and they both fall under the marketing umbrella. Really, you know, but advertising is really kind of just okay. I'm going to put this here, and it's going to do its job. Uh, where marketing is more of like an ever evolving thing. Yeah, well, well, how I understand it, and I have sort of a layman's appreciation of this is that uh, advertising uh, ultimately is is a uh, call to action. Mm-hmm. Buy this, go here, uh, that that sort of thing. Um, and marketing is the story behind why you should do that. Very true. Without saying, and by the way, you got to do this, right? It's just, it's the story. It's 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 what it's what this is all about. So uh, we really are, are grateful for your time. You have over ten years of experience in several different aspects of marketing. Most recently, uh, the behavioral health area. So you, you're the guy, you're the guy uh, 
to talk to. So, so let's begin with uh, some of the things you do in order to tell the story of what retreat does. Um, what, what is, you know, what is your first order of business here? What is the, the, um, you know, what is the story you're, you're telling people when you market uh, retreat? So the story that you tell people is really just kind of like the history of retreat, you know, um, started, you know, in Lancaster in 2011, um, you know, and really kind of became like the premier and best option in the state of Pennsylvania for anybody suffering from substance use disorder, you know, um, and as it's evolved and, you know, create, you know, created more services and really kind of like blossomed to where, you know, now they can, you know, we can help individuals with mental health as well as substance use disorder. Um, you know, it's really kind of just telling the story, right? Mm -hmm. And talking about the different services that are provided, talking about like the ease of admissions, um, you know, and really becoming like the key point of contact for whoever it is that's looking to put somebody in the treatment, yeah. you know, um, really kind of building relationships with everybody and saying, hey, listen, like, yeah, while we provide these phenomenal services, um, you know, we are very relationship driven. You know, we like to, you know, really work hand in hand with all of our different community partners, um, as opposed to just, hey, you know, send us people for treatment. Yeah, tell us some of the relationships that are necessary for you to build. I mean, I would imagine that, well, you tell us, uh, who, 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 what's the audience for this message? Who are you trying to build these relationships with? So, and that, and that's, it's very vast, right? Because, you know, uh, um, Sometimes we're working with hospitals. Sometimes we're working with emergency rooms, right? Where the relationship that you're building is really one of, okay, hey, listen, you know, we we take these insurances, we take, you know, all, you know, we're in network with all commercial insurances. However, when you call, we're answering on the second rank, right? Because a lot of times when you're working with an emergency room, the key is, is to getting individuals out as quickly as possible because the emergency rooms have such a high influx of individuals coming in that need services that typically, you know, when it comes to substance abuse or mental health, they really just want to get that individual out of the emergency room and into the proper level of care for them. You know, so when it comes to that, like that's really like, you know, the key point for, for them. But when it comes to dealing with, like, say, an outpatient provider who has a significant history of working with the individual that they're dealing with, they want to call someone that they know is going to trust or that they can trust that actually cares about the individual and like takes um, takes stock in that individual's life. You know, and really like buys in and really like, you know, comes down and like meets that individual on their level. And but then also can communicate properly with the clinician. So then, you know, everybody can remain on the same page. You know, uh, that's you know, it's really it's funny. It really depends on what your audience is when it comes to what story it is you're telling, how it is you're communicating, you know, because individuals, some, you know, different people care about different things. Indeed. Yeah. I would also imagine that. Uh, you're right. Your audience is not made up of one one individual group, but several different groups who are sort of stakeholders in getting people uh, healthy. Again, uh, the community at large must be uh, a focus of your marketing efforts, so that they understand what you do. Absolutely. Is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. And you know, and part of what we do is, you know, we like to always give back to the community. You know, um, that's a real big thing that Retreat does, particularly here in Lancaster County. Um, you know, we participate in all the different community events that are, you know, in, in, involved in recovery, um, you know, and we always kind of like put back into it. But we're always out like in the community, really kind of talking about the story of the retreat, talking about our success stories. You know, because a lot of individuals come into the retreat and then find recovery through different recovery community organizations, 12-step uh, fellowships, celebrate recovery, all the different avenues of recovery. You know, we really kind of like, you know, help push people into those long-term recovery solutions, you know, but really kind of like letting everybody know, like, hey, like we're here. You know, we we're here. We're successful. We have really helped the thousands of people in this county, you know, and really kind of like just telling that story. Yeah, the days I think when uh, a substance abuse, in particular, and mental health facilities as well, just plop themselves in the middle of some town or location and open their doors for business, uh, 
probably still goes on, but it's not the wisest way to approach these things. Uh, we see it now in the harm reduction movement mm -hmm. and the great resistance there is in neighborhoods who go, wait a minute, who are these people? Why, why are they bringing these types of folks into our community? So I know the retreat spends a lot of time building bridges uh, in the community, becoming good neighbors. Just never occurred to me that it might be something you had to do. That's what you, that's what you have to do. It's interesting. Um, this is huge business. This is a large, large uh, service that uh, retreat is in. Uh, I looked at some numbers overnight. Um, you know, it's a, obviously a multi-billion dollar operations going on here. Uh, but the numbers I see of all the people who have some sort of substance abuse or mental health disorder, a tiny percentage get help. Are you marketing to them too? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's really kind of the key is like getting, gauging those individuals when they're willing to come into treatment or willing to get help is such a small and narrow window that when that window occurs, being that individual that can make everything happen as quickly and as efficiently as possible is, is really the key to getting that individual the help that they need. You know, I'm always shocked by the number of uh, the percentage of, of people who are not getting the help they need. Um, it's close to 90% of the people who have some sort of disorder don't get any help. Uh, what are some of the barriers to, to them getting your message about treatment? Well, and you have to think, right? When individuals start, you know, abusing substances or just start using substances and they just start out, it's typically they're doing something to have fun. They're partying with their friends. You know, they're never going into it thinking that like, oh, hey, one day I'm going to need to go to treatment. One day this is going to be a problem where it's going to be destroying my life. Right. And what happens is it just evolves in like happens, you know, whether quickly, slowly, but it happens over time. But throughout that time frame, the individual is never like, oh, I need help until they actually need help, you know? Um, so unless somebody's informed ahead of time, they don't really know, you know? So really it's about educating the youth, educating um, the educators, you know, letting like the different, you know, you know, community bodies know, like, hey, you know, this is what we do. This is how we do it. Um, this is what we have to offer and we're available. Mm -hmm. You know, here's, and here's my direct cell phone number so you can get in contact with me whenever. Even if you have a question, I'm going to answer the phone and I'm going to do my best, best to answer that question. Yeah, time, we're going to get into the timing factor. You mentioned, you've alluded to it a couple of times, but we'll get a little more specific about that. You've marketed different, in different areas in your career, and you, you know um, that there is a time factor here that does not exist in other marketing efforts. You can, you can be marketing widgets and leave whatever marketing effort you just made and hope that in the next month or so, uh, the message will have uh, uh, gotten through. You don't, oh. have that, you don't have that time luxury with people who need treatment, right? No, no, you do not, because the time is of the essence. You know, and I can't tell you how many horror stories that I've heard, you know, from particularly from, like, say, emergency rooms or crisis centers where they've reached out to a facility and it's taken too long to get that individual into treatment. And they've said, you know what? Forget it. I, I, this isn't for me. I'm going to go back to doing what I'm doing. And they leave and they disappear. And then you see the person's obituary in the newspaper. Yes. I right? mean, it like is. A, it, yeah. So, that's the most defeating thing that I think that we deal with on, on, you know, on a daily basis to where, you know, it just screams time is of the essence. When that individual is ready to come into treatment, like we, you need to have, you know, an expedited and thorough admissions process, you know, and you need to answer your phone. Like that's, that, that's really the key. You keep mentioning that it's so, uh, it seems so uh, trivial, but it is absolutely critical. Um, if somebody, you know, when, if you find yourself into a voice prompt <laughs> where, you know, push one for this, push, you, you're already in a, you know, you're already a, Listen, calling I the wrong up, no. I hang up when I'm calling my insurance company. Exactly. And, right. I, get, and I get the automated message. I don't yeah. want to talk to a machine. Yeah. I need yeah. To speak with someone. I need to speak with someone, particularly someone that understands my situation, that can thoroughly walk me through to get my solution. And to make it happen as quickly as possible. That's just the, the, the age that we're in today. 
You know, and it doesn't matter whether it's substance abuse or anything that you're marketing, right? Like that's the solution to success. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah. So part of the message, obviously, is there are many places you can go. Here's our story about why you should take a look at retreat. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned a couple of others, more than a couple of items that distinguish retreat. In your marketing uh, approach, what are kind of the highlights that you tell, you know, your audience about why retreat is good at what they do? Okay. You know, so just from like the financial aspect, you know, being um, in network with all commercial insurance providers, accepting, you know, veterans benefits, um, try care like that is really huge, you know, because a lot of times individuals are hesitant to go into treatment because they don't want to go into treatment and get out with like a huge, ridiculous bill. Right. Where, you know, a lot of like the out of network facilities will, I mean, you know, it's, it's just, it is what it is. You know, people have to pay for services. The services aren't free, but the real key in regards to the retreat is the ease of admissions, as well as the vast programming that we have where everything is individualized. Right. So everybody that comes in the door gets treated as an individual and we treat the individual, right. We don't have like a etched in stone set programming for everybody to mold themselves into. Right. What I love to talk about is how like the retreats programming molds itself around the individuals, you know, which is really kind of like the opposite of what you would think, right? Like everybody comes in and you're going to do A, B, C, D, and A, and then you're going to be okay. Where the reality is, is everybody comes in the retreat does A, B, C, D, and A, and molds itself to the individual and treats that person as an individual. We occur, it occurs to me that one of the distinctions uh, that in your, in your marketing effort for what you're marketing is this notion that you, you've got to tell people very quickly that one size does not fit all. And um, the message is we're prepared to make sure we get the one that fits you. Otherwise, this is a waste of our time. Do you market directly to insurance companies so that you can have a better relationship that benefits the, the, uh, the end user? So I personally do not. Um, and I am sure that we have somebody internally that does. You know, because I know that that's a big piece in the foundation of the retreat and working with all the insurance companies, um, you know, which happens through, I guess, really kind of like the um, the becoming a network process. Uh, explain that. What do you, what do you... So, you know, when, when, when you, I guess, become licensed, right, you ah. oh, bill insurances, typically everything is out of network because you don't have a contract. So through the contractual phase with each insurance company, um, you know, you have to show them like your charts, really kind of, you know, explain to them who you are, what it is you do and have proof that shows them like, hey, like we worked with X amount of individuals that have your policy. And this is the data behind it. Yeah. 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 That, that, that's that's very key. Uh, it, it is the what I, I would guess, if not the first, it's certainly in the top five barriers for people. Oh, absolutely. The, the financial aspect of this. Does my insurance cover this? How much does it cover? Uh, and, and I guess one of the one of the key messages that a marketer would say to somebody is, uh, look, these are insurance companies. They're these are hard, hard headed uh, dollar and cents folks. They're not throwing money around. Mm -hmm. uh, so so uh, one of the things that a consumer would want to know is, well, what you know, does my insurance take this? It must be a. It must be reasonable. Tell me about stigma. I mentioned it way at the beginning. There is a stigma attached to, to not only substance abuse issues, but certainly mental health is still stigmatized. People don't like to talk about it. As a marketer, do you have to sometimes overcome that uh, stigma that's, that's there about yeah. what retreat does? Absolutely. And it's funny because, I mean, I've gone into so many places where, you know, individuals are, are real hesitant to even discuss, you know, uh, uh, substance abuse or mental health, particularly mental health. I think, yeah. that, you know, in today's day and age, mental health has a greater stigma than substance abuse. I, I agree. Yeah, I, agree. I think that, I think that recovery in regards to substance use has become very um, destigmatized. You know, you see a lot of celebrities, actors, musicians really pushing it forward and talking about it, um, you know, and really it, it's becoming like, you know, a, a regular thing. You know, like I have a 12 year old daughter who's, you know, who's in middle school 
and her and her friends are very aware of recovery and you know and yeah. and they talk about it and some yeah. people are like oh no i'm drug free and they're 12 years old but it's great that that's like the mentality of the youth right now yeah. right that's cool but when it comes to mental health like yeah absolutely we're running into the barriers you know where people people don't like talking it's a very personal thing yeah you know, mental health affects each individual very differently you know um like yeah there are definitely like you know diagnoses in in, in, in things that everybody has but i think that it affects everybody differently you know? my guess is matt o'reilly he is with retreat behavioral health marketing department we uh we have uh reached out to matt uh, who has a lot of experience in uh, in marketing to uh, tell us, you know, what that job is all about, uh, how the message gets to the right audience, uh, it, so that if you're sitting somewhere wondering where the hell do I go uh, to get help, uh, at least you'll be better informed. I mean, this is a peek behind the curtain, to tell you the truth. Uh, Matt, Matt's not going to show up on your door knocking on you knocking on the door saying, hey, you got any problems? Or let me tell you about retreat behavioral health. So, so you know, we thought we would give you this this uh, very sort of, you know, macro view. This is a, a very complex area, but you'll get an idea about how to pick a, a good facility. Uh, Matt also has a unique perspective in that he is a long-term, uh, in long-term successful recovery, uh, over 10 years sober now, right? Yes. I, I want to take a moment just ahead to have you talk a little bit about your experience and how that informs your marketing. Uh, but before we get to that, what um, has there been a bigger impact on what you do than social media? Social media must must really almost dominate how you market the retreat. Is that right? Absolutely. I think social media, I mean, we're just you've heard it for forever how like social media is, you know, the marketing of the future, the wave of the future. Well, the future is now it's here, you know, um, if you have a company and you're not marketing on social media, you're behind in the times, you know, um, we're the retreat. Like, yeah, we are big on social media. You know, we, uh, we post a lot of like our community engagement on there, which is huge, right. To letting individuals know where we're going to be, what it is that's going on, how this event went, um, you know, here's some services, here's how we can help you. You know, it's really about like reaching as many people as possible mm -hmm. you know, in a very simplistic form. Yeah. In the, in the, um, in, in the marketing as aspect of this, I look at a lot of websites, uh, look at a lot of Instagram and, read a lot of blogs from facilities that provide mental health services. And, you know, very often they are really fancy billboards. Um, but in, you know, the better cases, and uh, let's be honest, I mean, I know, I know it sounds like I'm blowing smoke at my partner's bear, but Retreat's website has a different function. Um, it's informational. Some of these websites are really loaded with plenty of information. Is that, a, is that a marketing focus for you guys, that your website tells a story that people can understand and, and become better informed? Absolutely. I think that the more information that you can put on there, um, the easier it is to find it. You know, navigation is huge when it comes to a website, you know, because I've been on websites where it's been impossible to find the information that I'm looking for. And it might be on the website. You know, we're really having a website where it's very simple, very thorough. Um, you know, easy to navigate. You can find whatever information it is that you're looking for, but also has a personal feel, right? Because people like to know that they're dealing with people and they're not just dealing with a company, mm -hmm. you know, like that's huge. Um, you know, but yeah, I really love the way that, you know, our website is and like the simplicity of it, but also the thor thoroughness. You know, um, I actually use it as, as a marketing, you know, piece myself as a marketing tool. Um, you know, I'll be in a hospital and I'll be talking to someone, in, in, you know, in a hospital bed and they'll say, well, what what's the facility like? And I'll be like, oh, you know, pull your cell phone out. Take a look at our website. You can take a virtual tour of the entire facility in the grounds. Like, yeah. it, you know, you it's it's almost like you're flying around and, and, and you're there, you know, so it's it's a great marketing tool as well. Now, uh, do most people find out about uh, your marketing message through social media, through the Internet? Is that where the overwhelming attention is? Uh, we definitely have a significant amount. I don't know if it is, you know, the top amount. I have it, I'd have to actually take a look at the numbers to give you, you know, a concrete answer. You know, but uh, Retreat does have a significant marketing team that is out in the community on a consistent basis. 
You know, Matt, there, as you know, there are thousands, tens of thousands of facilities that provide substance abuse treatment and mental health um, in the country now, 50,000 maybe. Mm -hmm. um, how important and, and to what extent is, is marketing tied up in branding? Is that, is that part of what you do? You know, in other words, getting your brand out there? Absolutely. You know, making sure that individuals understand that when they see the retreat logo or, you know, they see the retreat name, they understand the people behind the retreat is what's key. Because while there's 50,000 treatment centers, there's only one retreat with a team like retreats team. You know that the, the uh, history of particularly substance abuse treatment facilities mm -hmm. has, has, has not been sterling. No. To say the least, there have they there have been and there remain bad players. Absolutely. So part of your marketing, it's got to be you've got to be aware that people have that preconceived notion. Let's talk about your experience now, because it goes, I think, directly to the message of what your marketing is about. You have experience with substance abuse issues. You're sober now, ten years. Um, Tell us a little bit about your background now and how it informs your marketing since you've been there and done that. When did your troubles with substance abuse begin? So my troubles with substance use began probably like seventh grade. You know, I was very young. Um, and it really just started off with partying and, and having fun. Um, but it quickly became, it quickly consumed my life. Right. So when it comes to, I mean, and my, my sobriety date is November 9th, 2009. So we actually just celebrated 13 years in, in November. Oh, congratulations. Um, That's great. Thank you. And, and what I like to talk about is the time leading up to the point where I made the decision to surrender and get sober for, you know, for, for good. Right. Mm -hmm. There is a 10 year time frame where I was, I wanted it, but I didn't really want it. And I was in and out of treatment. And I like to say that I did what's called the Pennsylvania tour, right? Where I was constantly in and out of treatment facilities for about 10 years. I mean, there was a 10 year time frame where I was probably in about three to four facilities throughout the year, throughout a calendar year. Different facilities. Different facilities, just constantly now. in and out, in and out, in and out. You know, wanting a new way of life, but not really getting and understanding the new way of life, right? Not really being pushed into like the total continuum of care, right? Where I would go into a place for 30, 60, 90 days, and then I would go out and I'd be right back to where it was I began, you know? And everything, you know, I mean, old habits die hard, right? Indeed. Yeah, absolutely. Indeed. So what happened the last time, and this is what I talk about a lot of times when I'm speaking to the individual that's actually seeking help. Right. As I talk about my own personal experience in seeking the help. Right. And in finding the help and what actually finally worked for me, because I like to tell people, listen, if I can get sober, anybody can get sober. Right. So what I talk about is that last time that I came into treatment and I was finally broken and willing to do whatever it was that was suggested or directed of me. Right. Which included the detox, the residential level of care, moving, transitioning into partial, going into intensive outpatient, moving from intensive outpatient to outpatient to really like completing and graduating a program. Right. All the while maintaining um, working in, you know, and, and what worked for me was a 12 step fellowship, you know, but going through the whole transition and finally being broken enough and willing to do what was told actually worked right and what i found out which is you know which we you know is very commonly known today that the longer an individual is engaged in some level of care some form of treatment the higher rate the success is yep um is it safe to assume that as a marketer who's been there as i said and done all this and, and speak from experience that your message if if one sees a marketing message that even suggests that the process you just described is quick. Uh, that's probably a false marketing message. Absolutely. Right. I mean, Absolutely. I use the, I use the example of, I've done this for years. Uh, this is not a Sandra Bullock movie, 
where you go in for a 28 day treatment and not only get sober, but fall in love with, uh, you know, either one of the patients or one of the doctors, you know, that's for the longest time people thought, well, I'll just drop my, my son or daughter off here and in a month they'll be fine. Uh, yeah. That would be a marketing message that should send up a flare immediately. That's not the way it works. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it is, it, it, and the reality is it's a lifelong process, you know, and here I am with 13 years and still I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to go to therapy, right? Because there's still like some underlying stuff that's going on that like, hey, you know, maybe, maybe I should go talk to somebody who has a better perspective or a different perspective than mine. Because I know that a lot of times it's my own thought process that, that gets in the way. You know, and really understanding that it's not just a 28 day program. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, you know, that typically is not just going to work by itself. Well, listen, uh, we could talk about this forever. I think, first of all, I think marketing in general is, uh, fa- it is it's fascinating. You may, you may, you may get weary of all these messages that you're seeing, you're getting bombarded with a lot of information, uh, but it makes the world go round. And, and if you're careful and wise and, uh, conscientious, you can get a lot of good information from watching uh, marketing in action, and and you'll notice the good stuff from the phony stuff. I think Absolutely. pretty quickly, pretty quickly. Uh, Matt O'Reilly, uh, thanks so much for joining us. I love your library; it's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to have one built just like that in my house. Uh, Matt, of course, joins us from Retreat Behavioral Health, our uh, our underwriter partners. We appreciate his time, his experience. And his little tutorial here we got, and it was a good one, on uh, marketing something as sensitive, complex, and important as getting the help you need with substance abuse and mental health issues. Matt, I uh, hope to run into you someday soon. Definitely. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Take care. Our pleasure. And thank you guys for your time as well. Don't forget the uh, Behavioral Corner. It's uh, wherever you find your better podcasts or even the bad podcast. We're probably on those platforms as well. But when you find us, stick around. There's lots of uh, shows that we have on the shelf, and we hope you will subscribe. See you next time on The Behavioral Corner. Bye-bye. Retreat Behavioral Health has proudly been serving the community for over 10 years. Here at Retreat, we believe in the power of connection and quality care. We offer comprehensive, holistic, and compassionate treatment from industry-leading experts. Call 855-802-6600 or visit us at www.retreatbehavioralhealth.com to begin your journey today. That's it for now. And make us a habit, hanging out at the Behavioral Corner. And when we're not hanging... Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter on The Behavioral Corner.